founder of Thingy IoT here from Seattle. Uh, we're wrapping up, uh, I think, the 16-hour mark here Hi. on this uh, worldwide marathon. So uh, I just want to uh, go through a few of the little projects we've been working on here at Thingy IoT um, in the uh, environmental monitoring and agriculture space. So um, thanks, Don, for your video and, and what you guys are doing at Sensoterra. Um, I think uh, it's, it's definitely the, uh, no pun intended, but a ripe market in the ag space uh, to develop and deploy a LoRaWAN networks worldwide. So um, what we've done at, at, at Thingy is, is really establish a set of partnerships uh, with uh, key manufacturers and software companies um, so we can grow and develop the LoRaWAN market here in the United States. Um, you know, we're privileged to have all the work that was done, you know, out of Amsterdam and all the folks over in Europe and the companies that are innovating and driving the LoRaWAN ecosystem. It's, it's spectacular to constantly go to a, a, a things conference over in Amsterdam like we were in January and year after year, the, uh, the amazing um, companies that are being established in this ecosystem. So in the United States, we have less uh, less large companies driving large public networks that are available from the, the service providers. So what we're seeing here and where we're trying to drive business is, is around uh, agriculture and environmental monitoring, industrial monitoring spaces. So we've partnered with, you know, for the, obviously for the start, and thank you for the Things Industries for hosting this, this marathon tour, um, but we're the implementation partner in the, the U.S. for the Things industry. So if you need some help, we're here. We're here to help you on the deployments. Uh, we really focus on partnerships from the sensors into the gateways and the backhaul connectivity, getting you into the LNS systems, and then get that data out to the cloud or whatever your endpoint application. We're not focusing in that space. We're focusing on that connectivity piece uh, because out there in this wild, wild west, it's not just LoRaWAN. There's LTE and, and working with also the satellite providers. And, and uh, it's cool when this, you know, things like satellite connectivity really um, – uh, start connecting and you have things like Lacuna Space that are driving the LoRaWAN ecosystem as well. Um, so this is who we're partnering with. Um, so I was asked to just do some some quick little projects. So one of the things we've been doing over the last couple of months is taking the in the connectivity and the backhaul piece and really evaluating all the different gateways out there. So this is just in my backyard here because we're all working from home and you know we have an array of gateways from Cisco to Tectelic to the LoRx1 um, to the things outdoor gateways and testing things like what is the power utilization of these? Um, if you're using LTE as a backhaul connectivity, what are the packet per second rates? And can you squeeze those down into really small um, SIM packages, maybe through an MVNO provider? And so really evaluating the connectivity piece from the gateway perspective, as well as making sure that it's working through our things industries, enterprise stack, cloud hosted instance, make sure that we can connect these devices into the things network here um, in the community network we have built here in Seattle and we got dozens of gateways online. And so really evaluating this is, uh, is key and having this infrastructure has been really helpful as we build products as well. Um, so thinking we really got our start about in 2017, myself and a friend, Andrew, who's actually down in Perth, Australia right now. Um, there was a innovation challenge to develop a, a PM 2.5, CO, CO2, and, and ozone. They're byproducts of, uh, of combustion, and obviously they're byproducts that you're going to see in wildfires. And so wildfires have been big, both in the United States and abroad, and definitely down in Australia. So it's it's pretty fitting that the, the government organizations pooled together into a, a grant-funded uh, challenge for folks to go build a portable uh, wildfire detection system that measures. We're not talking home-based, uh, things you get off of Amazon, cheap little sensors. We're trying to integrate those sensors and evaluate those over a long period of time with the federal agencies and compare those against regulatory monitors. So the cool thing that we did is we built this, it was called Thingy AQ, um, and, and the original design actually had LoRa. Uh, we weren't using LoRa WAN at the time. We disabled in the, the microchip radio, we disabled the WAN stack so we could do point-to-point -point LoRa frames and then do repeating and kind of build a, a bridge or a repeater uh, because in some of these federal government uh, installations and trials, we could not have connectivity externally to a cloud, to an external network, or in the form of uh, the testing that happened in this very large uh, air quality test chamber where they're injecting particles and gases at different humidity levels. Um, it was almost like a Faraday cage. So things like 
Laura worked fine in there, but if I needed external connectivity via a cellular network or some network to an LNS server, it wasn't going to work. And so it actually worked in this in this place where we had Laura only connectivity. And so that's where we got our start. Um, and then you take this the next phase and you say, well, if these are deployed in really really remote applications in wildfires in the middle of nowhere, think of the LA fires last year to where you have limited connectivity. You might not have LTE connectivity out there. Or think of the bushfires down in Australia. You might not have connectivity in the middle of uh, Australia. And so uh, it was it was great to be working closely with Thomas and uh, and, and Rob at, at Lacuna Space and get some early access to their, to their device. And uh, we connected into our sensor and we started uh, uh, sending data out both on the terrestrial side and as the satellite came over, we got it into the Things Network forwarded that data off to AWS, into AWS IoT, and then we're able to do, do some cool things with it. So that integration stack is really where uh, we're seeing a lot of success and having a lot of fun with. Um, uh, the other projects we're working on is, is, a lot of it is in agriculture and environmental monitoring. I've spent years as a ski patroller working up in the mountains and dealing with weather forecasting and avalanche forecasting at a, at a local level, not at a, a large regional level. And uh, one of the challenges we've seen is, you know, these traditional uh, data and weather loggers. Uh, there's a climb of U50 that's sitting right there, a traditional Campbell Scientific Weather Station. But the whole aspect, you know, Reiner was talking about having his soil moisture sensors and, and enabling LoRaWAN, and Sensaterra is enabling LoRaWAN in these ag spaces. But one of the challenges we see in more of the meteorological side of the world, less about the farmers who want to get enabled to get data and new types of sensors in different places of the, of the farm, but the decoupling of what was traditionally a data logger and the sensors were wired to it, to now being able to disaggregate these and create distributed discrete sensor systems. And so not being bound by wires and to be able to decouple that from an entire proprietary system, um, including their data format, including their logging and their management system. So there's a lot of interest in the scientific community that we're working with that closely with the universities uh, a bunch of different research organizations and the ag community, and it all kind of comes together. You know, we're trying to, as a connectivity provider and as an integrator, bring the right solutions to market and making sure that we get the right set of sensors and the right set of gateways and, the, and help them in the backhaul connectivity to get their data. Because once we do in this open system, it really unlocks the ability for collaborative efforts and gathering different types of sensors and different types of data points, you aggregate that into an open system and now your data and the modeling you can do, you're decoupled by what was traditionally a proprietary system. So we have uh, obviously, even in ag space, our, uh, our air quality sensors, which are measuring particulates and gases in the air and temperature, pressure, humidity. And then we have uh, these, uh, these other two, the anemometer and the, the helical shield right there is by Barani Design. And they do a, a great LoRaWAN enabled and Sigfox enabled system that uh, uses naturally aspirated helical design. And so with that, you don't have a fan aspirated, which draws a lot of power. And so it reduces the power. Um, and then soil moisture sensors, we've got some new ones we're testing from Tectelic. So um, the cool part is, is we're really trying to unlock in these ag and weather-based systems uh, by utilize the open system of LoRaWAN. And so these are these are some of the things we're dealing with. And the cool part is we get to see and, and build new partnerships with sensor manufacturers and bring those to our customers. So um, that is all I have here. Let me stop sharing here. Okay, I think I'm now on video here. Um, it's been a pleasure being with you all for the last two hours from sunny Seattle here. Uh, I'm going to start up my next second glass of wine. Thanks to uh, Reiner for triggering that for all of us here. Um, uh, next up is uh, Adam Benzian. He's from Haxter, uh, local out of here in Seattle. So hope to uh, uh, I'll get to meet you soon, Adam. Thanks. Cheers. Everyone stay home, stay safe. And thanks, Things Industries, for putting this on. Cheers. Have a good day.